Welcome to another episode of the Ride and Inspire Rawcast. I'm out on a walk again, taking you on my creativity walk. It's a December day. It's actually a pretty mild December day at the Costa Blanca in Spain. And maybe you can hear the wind. Maybe you can hear the soil and the little bushes rustling because I'm walking through this little, I'd call it a shrubby trail. And today I want to talk about basics. And basics does not mean that they are easy, but I want to talk about basic skills that every mountain biker should actually be able to perform. So today it's about physical skills. As you may know, I'm a mountain bike skills coach and also a graduate mental trainer and a psychological counselor. So often I blend and interrelate mountain bike psychology, uh, mountain bike skills psychology and neuroscience. But today I wanna to focus more on the skills side. Although of course, if you've been listening to my podcast, you know that you can't really separate the one from the other. The other day I was watching, well, I was scrolling through my Instagram and I don't usually consume Instagram. So I need to say, I do create a lot of content, but I'm not usually a consumer. So I don't usually scroll through my feed because I use Instagram very intentionally. So I always decide how am I, or what am I going to look for on Instagram? Then I specifically search for it. And then I use Instagram to fuel me and to give me new ideas. And I don't just mindlessly scroll through my feed. But this was actually a day where I was looking for something. So I was scrolling through my feed and I have this video that suggested to me and it says five simple skills every beginner should be able to do. And I start watching it. And the first one I think was a bunny hop no foot or something. So anything else but simple. And this is like the I think 258th time that this has happened that I've been suggested a video that says five simple drills or five basics for mountain bike newbies or for mountain bike, every mountain biker should be able to do. And I swear to you, none of them I would ever have considered as a basic skill because all of these skills were very advanced and Basically, all of them were created to create entertainment. So we always need to, in my opinion, distinguish when we're watching social media, is this something that's created for entertainment? Is this something that is meant to get clickbait? So it's meant to get a lot of clicks and a lot of watches because, for example, it's a content creator that lives from this, which is totally okay. So just side note, I'm not judging this it's okay that there is entertainment and there's a lot of value this entertainment actually brings to us because a lot of people like it, but we need to differentiate is this educational content or entertainment. And most of these videos, if not all the ones I've seen so far were about entertaining, getting clicks and watches. The danger of this, in my opinion, is that a lot of let's call it normal mountain bikers. So mountain bikers like you and me and most of the riders I coach. I do coach all levels. I've also coached pro racers and a lady for the Olympics, but most of the riders I coach are hobby riders. So people who ride their mountain bike to have fun out there and maybe to challenge themselves or to grow, but they're not pro riders. So they don't live they don't earn their living with the mountain biking. And I would say probably about 99% of all riders out there are in this category. They are people who ride mountain bikes for fun. And most of them are not pro athletes. And for them, these basic skills are not basics. So the danger in these videos is that we normal people lose the perspective of what's actually normal and then of course lose the confidence in ourselves and also lose let's call it the motivation to actually practice skills because most of the skills out there are just unrealistic for us 
Also, I believe one of the biggest dangers, and that's something I see a lot when I'm working with clients, is that people are practicing skills that they think are basics that are actually not basics. So today, I really wanna talk and specifically give you a few examples of what mountain bike basics, in my opinion, are. And this is not just my opinion, this is my now over 14 years of full-time coaching and training other instructors at being instructors. What are mountain bike basics that every mountain biker should practice? And what are not mountain bike basics? And what are the skills you should not start practicing straight away? Because, well, I'm actually gonna get to that later. First off, I think it's super important to decide what mountain biking is for you. Because nowadays, there are so many different mountain biking types. So there's dirt biking, there's mountain bike slope style, there's downhill mountain biking, there's cross country riding, there's trail riding, there's enduro riding, there's people who mainly just ride gravel roads, although of course that may now be considered gravel riding, but I know a lot of people who do that on mountain bikes. Then there's people who just ride four by fours at a very slow speed, some ride them at a higher speed, and they would never consider themselves at this, as the same type of mountain biker. So all I'm getting to is that there's lots of different types of mountain biking and it's always hard to say what is let's call it the quote-unquote right way of mountain biking or what is the quote-unquote real mountain biking. I believe everyone should find this out for themselves. So in my last episode I also talked about it I believe you should decide what is mountain biking for you, how does it serve you, how does it do you good, and how can you utilize mountain biking to actually go out and have a good time versus go out and make you more anxious or just more stressed out than you may already be. And the mountain biking I'm addressing now is the trail or technical trail riding mountain biking. That's the type of mountain biker I work with most. These are people of all ages. The majority of my clients is 50 plus, I would say. And although I do train and I do work with all levels, the majority of the riders I work with, they enjoy riding technical single tracks up and down, and they enjoy riding in control. So they don't wanna just shred or huck and pray and survive the trail. They want to be in control of their bike and they want to find out skills and techniques that will serve them to actually come back healthy and to have a good time on their bike because they are dominating the trail as a pilot and not as a passenger. And for this type of mountain biker, so if you consider, or if, you, if this spoke to you and if you think, okay, that's the type of mountain biking I enjoy, then the following skills are definitely basics that you need to master first before you master other skills. If we look at a technical downhill trail, and if we look at most of the obstacles and most of the technical difficulties that we face on such a trail, then most of them are chunk, gnar, loose terrain, so either loose gravel or slippery terrain, so wet roots or mud. So let's call it unpredictable conditions of grip. And sometimes, of course, jumps or drops, but that's usually at a pretty advanced stage already. So if we're looking at, let's call them blue trails, which is blue in the US and in Europe, this is usually S1 on the single trail scale. Then we're looking at, as I said, looseness, steepness and obstacles to conquer. So which basic skills do you need to tackle these sections in control? The first one is something that I call pressure control. That means that you need to start to understand how you can generate and keep traction on your wheels by using your body intentionally. That means that you want to stay 
heavily weighted through the feet with little to no weight in your hands and you want to allow your arms no you want to allow the bike to move by using your arms and legs as your suspension because you're keeping the pedals level to the horizon so the pedals are staying level to the horizon not to the ground and the bike is then moving and your body is stable that in a nutshell is the goal when you're riding down so the goal is to stay stable because you're allowing the bike to move and keeping the body stable and you achieve this by staying heavily weighted through the feet because your cranks are not fixed to the bike so the cranks can move so you keep you so you can keep your pedals level while the bike is actually moving and that's why it's heavy feet light hands this principle sounds super easy and i would call it a basic but that doesn't mean that it's simple this is a basic that can always be perfected so actually it's a basic that i call a fundamental skill that i work with even pro riders every week because you will never be able to perfect it but you can always improve at it and you need to be addressing it constantly the next basic that i really recommend practicing is braking i have to be honest never met a rider who has perfect braking skills and i don't know if it's actually possible to be perfect at it but i've also met a whole lot of advanced riders who are really really bad at braking so i encourage you to practice braking how can you practice braking for one thing i want you to start trusting your front brake start practicing to deliberately come to a stop from different speeds to deliberately find that threshold of your brakes where the brakes are not blocking and you have that ideal stopping power of your brakes and i want you to encourage stopping to a full stop from different speeds because that will give your brain the knowledge and experience it needs to then build confidence on it because it can calculate duration path and outcome of a possible trail and of a possible let's call it emergency stop at any speed because it has already done this so your brain i've already addressed this in one of my youtube videos that i'm going to link below your brain is a supercomputer and it always calculates it always calculates duration path and outcome so how long is it going to take me to do this how am i going to achieve this what different options do i have to achieve it and what's the possible outcome so am i going to be safe or not and if the outcome or if the chances of the outcome are rather negative it's probably going to give you the signal of fear and that of course is a legitimate fear because the chances of it going bad or ending badly are pretty high and if you don't have a lot of experience braking at different speeds braking to a full stop at different speeds braking on different surfaces then you are going to feel insecure when the terrain is unpredictable and that is very healthy so i really encourage you to practice braking the next basic that many people don't even think about and unfortunately i don't know a lot of coaches who teach this is dismounting safely in steep terrain and you want to be able to dismount to the rear of your bike after having stopped in a controlled manner and keeping your pedals level as long as possible so you want to break to a full halt keep the pedals level and then you want to dismount to the rear of your bike why to the rear because then you're safe and your bike is probably safe if you do it in a safe manner i have a video about this that i'm going to link below and this is such an essential especially if you're fearful on trails that's very often because you have not yet automatized this skill because as i said your brain will be going duration path and outcome how long do i need to do this what's the chances of this going well and um how automatized are my skills for doing this so how is my is my path 
a path that I've gone down many times or is the path something that I've just done once so the chance of it going well is not very high. And if your brain senses that insecurity, it's going to give you fear way before the chances of it going wrong are actually there. So you may develop an over anxious brain if you cannot dismount to the rear of your bike in an automatic fashion. And that's only healthy because it's your brain telling yourself, man, I'm important to myself. I don't want to crash. And that is totally okay. And that is actually very healthy. The next basic is anything involving slow speed skills. I would say about 90% of the riders that I've met ride too quickly, too quickly. They advance to riding at a fast speed way too early. The problem with this is that they're actually masking errors in their foundation. They're masking errors in their slow speed skills. And then when the terrain becomes too technical, as they advance the difficulty of their trails, then they stagnate at a point because they cannot ride slowly. So if you have a very technical trail where it's very chunky and then there are also tight turns and you can't compensate for a lack of foundational skills with speed anymore, that's when these people hit a plateau. And then until then, they've automatized their errors in their foundation for many, many years because they've been practicing them. And then it takes a long time to reprogram your body and the brain to learn new skills. If I summarize it, the most important foundational skills that you need to ride technical trails are exactly these. So body positioning, being able to separate the bike from the body, meaning that you're using your arms and legs as your suspension and not relying on the mountain bike suspension. Braking skills, really fine tuning that braking, slow speed skills, and being able to dismount safely. And then there's a next biggie, and that is vision skills. Being able to really look where you want to go and intentionally using your vision to serve you. However, I need to say your vision is a biggie because 80% of all the sensory input that comes into your brain comes through your eyes. So if you are trying to look ahead, like everyone tells you, but you cannot bring yourself to it, then I'd like to invite you to look into the why. Why can I just not look ahead? What is my brain sensing? And maybe your brain is sensing that your, for example, your balance is off, that you're not stable through the feet. What do I mean with that? It means that maybe you're not evenly weighted with 50% of your weight right and 50% of your weight on your left foot. So your brain is sensing that you don't have a stable stance and that's why your brain is not looking far ahead because it knows that the chances of you getting that far are not very high. So it's looking at the things and the obstacles closer because for example, you're not very good at hitting the line you want to hit or not very good at braking. So your body is sensing what's back there is not interesting for me because the chances of me getting there are not very high. So trust your brain versus trying to fight it. That's what I see a lot of times when people are just, let's call it shouting out tip traps, like look far ahead and the person doesn't, cannot look far ahead, then often it's because your body is much smarter than your brain and your body is sensing that you're not stable on your bike, you're not very good at braking and or you're not very good at the overall strength and coordination you need to ride at the speed you're currently riding so it doesn't want to look that far. And that's why slow speed skills and being able to dismount safely are so essential because they will give your brain that sheet anchor. They will give your brain that security of being able to bail out safely. And then you can work your way up step by step in a safe and strategic manner. If I was to make a YouTube video about these basics or 
a YouTube short or an Instagram reel, I can guarantee you that almost no one would watch it. And that's the huge difference between entertainment and education. What people are watching for entertainment is probably not what they actually need to learn. And that's the big dilemma of social media. And that's why I really invite you to question the way you use social media. If it's just for your entertainment and you're watching it for fun, then of course, if it brings you value, great. But don't confuse the content that is made for entertainment with the content that will really bring you value in an educational sense. And also, I'd like to point out that we do not learn movements by watching. We learn movements by doing them. And we need to repeat the movements hundreds and thousands of times to automatize them. Because there are different phases when we're learning skills and it takes time and repetition and deliberate practice to turn stuff we've understood to bodily abilities. And we cannot, it's impossible as an adult to learn movements in one, two, three days. It's not possible. So unfortunately out there, I know the industry wants us to believe that one day skills clinics work wonders. And of course they help, but you will only learn intellectually and you cannot turn the movements you learn that day into bodily abilities in a single day. It's just not possible. I don't know a single person who learned to walk within a day or learned to play an instrument or learned a language within a day and exactly the same applies to mountain biking. So just because the industry is telling us book this four hour cornering course or a six hour jumping clinic or book this, do this, just because there's so many people offering that, it doesn't mean that it's the only thing that works. Or in fact, that it's good and very useful for you. I know many people will say, oh, what the hell is she talking about? Well, that's just how our brain, how our body work. We need time, we need repetition over a long period of time, and we need structure. We need to add structured drills to allow our brain and body to turn what we know into what we do. And if you would like to do that with me, then you can find the link to my proven, super simple to follow home training drills right below this podcast. To sum it up, I would like to say that the basics many people declare as basics, especially when they're coming from a BMX background or from a downhill background, or if they learned mountain biking as a child, are not basics for most of us, let's call it normal adult mountain bikers, because we need more time and we need a stable foundation before we can advance to these skills. And now I'd like to address what I said at the beginning of this episode, that I said, if you start practicing these skills too early, then what are you doing? You're automatizing the errors you have in your skills foundation. And that's why it's dangerous to start practicing jumping, drops, bunny hops, nose pivots, and all these, yes, admittedly very fun and interesting skills too quickly because by doing so we're automatizing the skills we're practicing the errors we have in our foundation and I committed this error for I'd say about three or four years because I wanted to start bunny hopping straight away I wanted to start stopping straight away jumping straight away because of course these skills are fun and they look cool and everyone on social media promotes them as though you can just learn them like that. But no one can do the work and practice the drills for you. You need to put in the work. You need to bring the courage to make mistakes. You need to create a safe learning zone to actually make mistakes safely. And you need to add structure and put in the hours of repetition to actually turn knowledge into bodily abilities to then feel safe out on the trails. The main cause why riders are fearful on trails, 
why riders crash way too often on trails and why many people think mountain biking is dangerous is that, okay, I'm gonna put this bluntly, they are way over their head. They're riding trails that are too technical too early because mountain bikes have become better and because trail centers and all different signposted trails have become more readily available, but that doesn't mean that people have leveled up enough to ride these trails. Trust your body, trust your gut, listen to your fear, work your way up slowly, and I guarantee you, mountain biking does not need to be dangerous. Mountain biking can be safe, it can be fun, and you can advance and learn skills at any age if you just allow yourself the time and find a structure that works for you and then stick to it by practicing methodically. Then you can learn anything. Yes, you can also learn to jump, you can also learn bunny hops, nose pivots, stoppies, whatever you wanna learn, but not in a few days and not right as a beginner. That's all I've got for you today. I really hope this episode brought you value. Leave me a comment and uh, get in touch if you have specific ideas or wishes for podcasts. I would love to hear from you how you like this episode. If you want to keep my podcast coming, then buy me a coffee or become a patron because I make zero money with this podcast, but instead it actually costs me money for hosting, etc. Sending you my love. I'm Roxy. Hope to see you again for my next episode.